The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD available from SDC Publications. In this video I'm going to show you how to place and edit text. There's two ways you can get to your uh, multi-line text. One is to go over to the Draw Toolbar and select on the A that you see here. Another is to come up here to the annotation and select on the A here, and this will open up what's called multi-line text. Whenever you select multi-line text, you're going to be prompted to specify the first corner, and really what you're being prompted are, is to specify the corners of what's essentially a text box. All right, so you can see that uh, my cursor is blinking here, and it's ready for me to type something in. I'm going to type A, B, C, D and I want to point something else out to you. As soon as we got into the multi-line text command, our ribbon changed to the text editor. And so I want to show you how this works. If I highlight A, B, C, and D, this is my current text height. I'm going to pick on the down arrow here and I'm going to pick on 1 and so that you can see what that text height would look like if it's changed from 0.2 inches to 1 inch. Other options I have when I highlight this are to make it bold or to italicize it or to underline it. I've got to, or even to overline it. There's all sorts of things I've got, or, but I'm going to undo all those and go back to where it was. Let's say that I need some uh, what we call superscript. I'm going to type a 2 right here at the end of my ABCD, and then I'm just going to highlight the 2 and I'm going to come over here to this button. This is the superscript. It says X with a superscript 2 on it. I'm going to pick that and you can see that it puts the little superscript 2 in there. Uh, to lock in your changes you just pick on this button, Close Text Editor. So now you can see uh, you know what it is that I've just placed. So I'm going to come in here and I want to edit this some more so I'm going to double click on it. When I double click on it I can highlight it again and let's say I wanted to change it to a different text height. Well, if I've already entered some text heights, like 0.75 or 0.5 or 0.2, but what if I want to put a different text height then? Let's say that I want to make this 1.5. I'm going to t what you need to do is type 1.5, which you get right here, and then press enter. And then close the text editor, and that will lock in your, your text height change. Now I'm going to double click on this again, which will bring me back into the text editor. Other options that you have to edit this are to just, let's first let's highlight it. You have certain justifications, like you have a top center, you have a top right, and these are this text box is so large it's jumping all over the place on me, but you can see as I move through these I have some options about where that text may move. Other options that I, that I have are for line spacing, like I've got, this is left, this is actually default, what you see now, this is what left justification would look like. This is what my center justification would look like. In fact, let me scroll down a little bit if I can. That'll make it easier to see. Okay, so there's center. And the one thing about center is that as I add text to it, it will keep centering it in the box. Uh, the other option I have is a right justification, a left justification. And these, if you put your mouse on there, you can see it. And then you have one that's called uh, distribute. We used to call this fit, but what it does is it fits whatever you type in here. It fits it between that, and it just keeps trying to fit it in between until you close your text editor, and so it keeps everything inside the box. All right, I'm going to double click again on this text. Uh, I'm going to delete some of this out. I'm going to highlight it and press the delete key. Okay, and uh, also I'm going to highlight this and just go back to my normal justification over here. This is the default justification. Alright, sometimes when we're doing a mechanical drawing we may have to add uh, a symbol like diameter or something to a line of text. You can come up here where your symbols are and pick on symbols and the common ones are kind of in here, especially things like diameter. If you pick on diameter it put one in. You can come up to symbol. If you needed a degree symbol it will put degrees in. Come back to symbols. If you needed a plus minus uh, if you needed, for example, uh, the Greek letter for omega, or the Greek letter omega, there it is. Now sometimes you'll have a symbol that you need that's not in any of these over here, and in that case you can even pick on other, 
And what that will do, I'm going to drag this over, is open up a character map based on what you have here. So for example, if I want to go down into geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, so I'm in the G's now, GDT, that gives me a bunch of different characters. And so for example, there's one here, this is the depth character. And so if I pick on that and pick select, it will place it in there. And if I highlight that and pick copy, and then close this and come back here and then right click my mouse uh, and pick paste, it'll actually paste that special character into that line of text. So once you practice enough with, um, with the text editor, you can see you've got a lot of different options. So I'm going to pick on close text editor. And remember that I, what I was using here is called multi-line text. I want to show you another one. I'm going to pick on the text arrow. I'm going to pick, pick on single line text. And looks what, look at what I'm prompted. It says specify a start point. So I'm going to pick a point right here. Now it says specify a height. I'm going to type 1 and press enter for my height. It says specify a rotation angle. The default is 0, but if I wanted to rotate the text 90 degrees, I would just type 90, which would rotate the text counterclockwise. But I'm going to press enter on my rotation angle of 0. And at this point, I can type A, B, C, D. And I've used, this is called a single line text. Now the advantage of single line text is this. If I want to put some text somewhere else on my drawing, all I need to do is move my cursor over and pick and I can type A, B, C, D again, except I've got to type a D. Unlike multi-line where I had to just define a text box, D text or dynamic text, or what some people call single line text, but uh, it's also called D text, you can type the D text command to get into it, allows you to keep placing text around on your drawing. Now one thing I want you to notice is that when I'm in D text, this does not become a text editor, so it just defaults to whatever your textile settings are. All right, so I'm going to press enter and get out of this command. Now, if I want to edit D text, I double click on it, and I can change what it says in here. I can type A, B, C, D, for example, if I want to, but I don't have the options to change its height. So I want to show you about editing the height. If you pick on D text and right click and go to properties, you'll see this properties box open up here and you have some options here to change the height. For example, if I want to change just that to 2 inches, I can type 2 right here. If I want to rotate it 90 degrees, I can type 90 for example. So what I'm doing is I'm editing the dynamic text or the D text or the single line text, whatever you prefer to call it, by using uh, its properties. All right, so I'm going to close that, which uh, close the properties box, which locks my, and then press escape, which locks my changes into place. So we've seen two texts here: multi-line text, which begins by drawing a box like this, like a text box. Uh, I'm going to press escape, or the other option is to pick single-line text, which allows us to place multiple uh, multiple entities of text. I know there's a uh, <laughs> a better term for it than that. Alright, that's the text command.